actor, television host, philanthropist, record-setting Make-A-Wish granter, and of course, 16-time champion and WWE superstar, John Cena. Thank you guys for being here today. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, I can see you, though. This is no, but there, there are me. certain moments where you can't. It's we are right real. I there. can become invisible. Uh, we have a bunch to talk about. First, I'm going to let you guys know we're going to take questions from you at the last about 15 minutes. So uh, those are going to come in through Slido. So if you go to slido.com, you can submit your questions, and then we will get to those. But I get to go first. Uh, Fire away. We're going to just go. There's yeah, so go much to talk about. Yeah. We have one thing in common, you and I. Okay. And that's that we beat people up for a living. No, uh, we're New Englanders. That's all we have in common. So I am very curious to know how we both started in the same spot. I know where my journey went, but clearly you went a completely different way. How do you become a WWE superstar? Did you always love wrestling growing up? Uh, I certainly did. Uh, it was a very long story short. It was just a matter of being lucky enough to get a chance to do something like that and being prepared for the opportunity. But and how I, do you prepare for an insane opportunity? Uh, I think certainly understanding what WWE was all about, even if it was just from the level of a, of a fan. Um, growing up with it, I, I grew up as a, a child in the 80s, so I kind of rode the wave of Hulkamania, just like everybody else in New England did and around the world. Um, and then WWE's popularity came back to a meteoric rise in the mid to late 90s with uh, the network wars they had with um, uh, Turner and WCW. So as a college kid, I became very interested and revitalized in, in the WWE culture again. And um, then when I got a, a chance almost directly out of college to try my hand at doing it, I thought I had a great understanding of like, oh, if I could ever be a character, I would love to do this. So I think I was head and shoulders above the rest prepared uh, compared to someone who was like, hey, kid, you look like you could be really good at this and then have to figure it all out. I really did understand the world and, and want to be involved in it. It did help that you do look like you'd be pretty good at it. Well, that's also what someone said. <laughs> but like I said, I was, I was lucky enough to get a chance and then prepared for the opportunity. But you're, you're playing it off like you, like you just were. You drove across the country to California yeah. with $500 to your name. Is that it, a true story? I actually, I actually took a flight, uh, landed with uh, two Army duffel bags and 500 bucks, and it wasn't to like go on this quest to be a WWE superstar. It was just to prove my dad wrong. That's all. Genuinely, that's what drove you. Yeah, yeah. When all the other kids were going to like Cancun on spring break or uh, these party cities, I went out to Venice, California because I was studying uh, exercise, fizz, and kines. And that was uh, known as the mecca of bodybuilding. And there's a gym over there, Gold's Gym Venice, that was like the epicenter of the fitness industry. People would try out their new equipment there. Supplement companies would try out their new products there. Like if you had an apparel company, uh, you would vend your wares there. It's now since relocated, like the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic was uh, a few weeks ago, and that's kind of the epicenter now. But it was all centrally located there, and I just wanted to see what that was about. And when I saw it, I'm like, man, I, I could try my hand at this. I think I want to be involved in this culture. And I told my dad, I'm like, I'm going to graduate, and I'm going to go out to California. I'm going to go to Venice. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I think my degree is going to give me the skills I need to kind of survive. And my old man said, you won't make it two weeks. So I wanted to turn around and give him the double middle fingers, but I didn't. <laughs> Instead, I just took a flight, uh, packed all my clothes and all my cash, and went out there and tried to last longer than two weeks. What were you going to do if that didn't work out? I wasn't going to make it not work out. I, I worked um, around the clock. I pretty much worked. I ended up getting a job at Gold's Gym Venice doing whatever they asked me to do. Uh, pretty much I was like the mayor of the gym. I knew all the members. I still go back there today to say hi to the, some of the few soldiers that are still there. Uh, I bounced at a nightclub where I could. Um, I would finagle free meals where I could. At one point I lived in the back of a 91 Lincoln Continental. Um, you fit? I did. It's very roomy. <laughs> And the trunk is great. You can fit all your stuff back there. Uh, it was, I wasn't going to not make it work. I, 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 the, my goal was just to prove my father wrong and not return in two weeks. So I did the best I could to stay out there. That's incredible. Uh, let's talk about, you know, creating a character. You kind of mentioned it, that you, you know, you think you have an idea of what you want to do. It's a very interesting thing 
that's unique to WWE superstars, is that you're a, a person with, you know, muscles, a body, clear skills, but then you have to create a persona. How do you start, where do you even start something like that? Uh, it's a lot of hit and miss. Uh, I remember when they started with me, uh, I had been working smaller times in front of smaller audiences around the United States as a certain personality, and it was more of a bad guy. And then WWE brought me in, and I was just talking about this to some WWE superstars, because this is what all of our talent struggle with most. How can I create a relatable identity? And a lot of us miss. And the first time I came out, I, I missed. My boss came out and said, I want someone with ruthless aggression. And here I come. Here is John Cena from West Newbury, Massachusetts in boots and tights. And he's going to wrestle his heart out. And it's going to be fun. And man, it was not fun. It was not, because I am not the most acrobatically gifted performer. Um, I'm a little unorthodox. Some, some would say there's a few laughing in the back to get the joke. Uh, and it just, uh, I didn't understand the opportunity that was in front of me. I could have used those two words, ruthless and aggression, together, and created my own identity. Maybe it is the exact opposite of those two words. Maybe I'm truly a pacifist, like the, like the dude in Big Lebowski. <laughs> and my old, the, the old man or the, the boss has me wrong. He's got me pegged as this ruthless guy, but I come out drinking a white Russian going, I don't know, man. <laughs> Or maybe I embrace those two words. To be ruthless is to pursue things without boundaries, to just go after it no matter what the cost. And aggressive is a certain behavior. So I could take those two words and identify it with myself and maybe come up with a character based on that. Like, um, and this is what I was talking to these superstars about and they kind of thought like, whoa, you just came all up with that off of two words. And I'm like, yeah, but back in the day, I just totally missed. I, to I got a golden opportunity I wasn't prepared for it, and I totally missed. And it wasn't until an absolute accident that I once again got lucky enough to get another chance, but this time I was prepared. And you didn't wear tights. I didn't have to wear tights. And the thing is, at the time, WWE had just gone through a giant transition. They had just changed their name from F to E. Um, they had gone through a rocky period with the XFL, so that they tried that, they missed on that. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of their big superstars had just left. Uh, the Rock had gone Hollywood. Stone Cold Steve Austin had been removed from duty. Uh, I think uh, a few of their other brand name guys were either hurt or taking a more of a part time. So we had to bring all these new superstars in and we went to more of a reality based program and we began to tone down the Jerry Springer-ish nature of our show. So every performer looked the same. Performers began using their real name. I was lucky enough to use a real name, although John Cena isn't that cool of a wrestling name. <laughs> uh, so it worked. <laughs> it somehow, somehow it became good, but man, if I could do it again. Uh, so everyone wore wrestling gear and everyone was realistically based, so there was no difference in the two. And when I got an opportunity to create a character based on hip hop culture, the first thing I did was ditch the boots, ditch the tights, because everyone else is doing this, and this will easily define my character. And it, it really worked. It really resonated with the audience. They understood who I was without even me saying a word, just by my appearance. Yeah. You said if you could do it again, you, would, you wouldn't be John Cena? Man, that's like, uh, uh, I've had a few people ask me, like, that's not your real name, though, right? Like, that's what I came up with. That's, <laughs> went into the think tank and was like, John Cena. It's going to be awesome. No, that's, uh, yeah, I think. You know, Stone Cold Steve Austin, mm. and Hulk Hogan, and The Undertaker, yeah. and The Rock. John. John Cena. <laughs> eh, what are you going to do? Have you ever, like, if you had to pick a name now, like, what would you be? What would you wish your name was? Sterling Awesomeness Guy. That's marketable. Yeah, I think so. That's yeah, right to the point. <laughs> I think so. It knows exactly what you are. There's no confusion. Uh, is it more important for your character to be someone you feel you can relate to or that fans can relate to? The audience. Yeah. The audience, because you can genuinely feel like, oh, I'm doing a good job, just like I did when they sent me out there for the first time, and I wasn't doing a good job because you folks didn't understand what I was trying to do. So it's, it's like, that's another thing. Uh, we, I often talk with uh, younger superstars about this. Do not. 
be humble enough to know when you miss.